Okay, happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, if you're in the U.S. and Canada and you're a hockey fan, you had some good playoff hockey to watch last night. I, myself, am a huge New York Rangers fan, but I'm living here in North Carolina. For those of you who may not know, the New York Rangers were swept out of the playoffs by the Carolina Hurricanes last night. And other than being utterly heartbroken, as hockey is my other huge passion, other than Formula One racing, uh, some interesting things happened there. So if you're in Europe, maybe you've heard of Henrik Lundqvist, the Swedish superstar goaltender for the New York Rangers. He's 39 years old, and the speculation is this might have been his final hurrah in the Stanley Cup playoffs and his last chance to win a Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers. Uh, it kind of seemed like it was a passing to the torch, and at 39 years of age, is Henrik Lundqvist done? Um, for those questions, I encourage you to go check out some, some hockey channels, but for me, in Formula One, it brought up a great question. Henrik Lundqvist, 39 years old, and it looks like his awesome career is going to end without a Stanley Cup for the New York Rangers. And in Formula One, we have our other old war horse here, Kimi Raikkonen. So let's talk a little bit about Kimi Raikkonen today. Kimi, 40 years of age, sitting on 21 wins, 103 podiums, and of course, he's the 2007 Formula One champion. The last year and a half to two years, I think a lot of people have probably seen on the internet is Kimi Raikkonen too old to be driving in Formula One? Should he make way for some younger talent? Um, we've been hearing that even about Sebastian Vettel, who's 33, and Kimi's sitting there way older than him. So let's let's find out. Let's take a look at the stats of Kimi Raikkonen and see, should Kimi Raikkonen still be holding a seat in Formula One, or should he make way for that younger talent? So what I've looked at, let's look at his last three years to start off. So in 2018, Kimi Raikkonen's gonna start his final season with Ferrari. Kimi gets 12 podiums in 2018, gets the win in the U.S. Grand Prix, has four retirements, and has an average finish of sixth place during that season, and finishes third in the standings. So Kimi is racing fantastic. But your number one competitor is always your teammate. So let's see how his teammate Sebastian Vettel did in the exact same equipment. Sebastian Vettel also gets 12 podiums in 2018. However, Seb's going to score five wins, and so by comparison, I could see why maybe Ferrari looked to make a change after this season, um, but I don't think it's totally fair. Seb only gets one retirement and has an average finish of 3.9, so basically a fourth place finish. Finishes second in the standings, so only one spot better than Kimi. Uh, Kimi just couldn't get the wins, but everything else, I think he was right there with Seb. 12 podiums, and I mean, Kimi, Kimi was... When I was doing the averages here, I, he was up there a lot. I had 12 podiums. He was finishing second, third all the time. Uh, a little bit of different, you know, boxing and pitch strategies there. Uh, Kimmy could have had way more than one win that season. But nonetheless, the Ferrari team decides to make a change. And Kimmy's going to go join Alfa Romeo for 2019. And Charles Leclerc is going to replace him at Ferrari, which we'll get down here to that in a second. 2019, his first season with Alfa Romeo. Uh, zero wins or podiums, which with Alfa Romeo is to be expected. But he finishes in the points nine times. Has two retirements. Winds up with an average finish of 11.6. And he finishes 12th in the standings. By comparison, his teammate Antonio Giovinazzi. Zero wins and podiums as well, as you would expect. Four times in the points. Only one retirement. An average finish of 13.9. And he finishes 17th in the standings. 2020 so far to date at Alfa Romeo. Kimi's got zero wins or podiums so far. No finishes in the points. One retirement, which was actually a 14th, by the way, because everyone retired that race. That was the first race of the season. And an average finish of 14.3 and currently sitting 18th in the standings. Uh, by comparison, Giovinazzi has zero wins and podiums. Has finished in the points this season. Uh, I believe it was a ninth place. Uh, zero retirements to date, and so far his average finish is 13.5, and he's currently sitting 14th in the standings. Obviously, 2020, we've only had four Grand Prix so far, so I don't really think that that's a significant uh, statistical analysis, but 2019, we can kind of get an idea. So looking through just the top part of this board, Seb finishes second, Kimmy finishes third. Average place, you know, basically two spots off from a fourth to a sixth. Um, yeah, Seb has more wins and less retirements at Ferrari in 2018, but
but they both have 12 podiums. So when it comes down to, to getting on top of that podium, Seb, Seb and Kimi are pretty much one and the same there. And if you look at 2019, Alfa Romeo, kind of similar stats here, but no doubt Kimi outperforms Antonio Giovinazzi. It's his first season. So, you know, you got to go a little easy on him. He's a brand new driver to the team. But yeah, nine times in the points versus four. He does have one more retirement, but his average finish is better by about two spots. And he finishes five spots ahead of Antonio Giovinazzi in the points. Um, I do think that Giovinazzi is looking a lot better this season. But so far through those two seasons, I don't see much of a difference between these two drivers other than the wins up here for Seb. But there's more than one way to look at this. So let's take a look at Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. And what I did here was I compared Kimi's 2018 with Ferrari versus Charles Leclerc's 2019 first season with Ferrari. Same equipment now. Yes, it's one year off, so slightly different. But let's see how they did. Kind of comparing their his last year of Ferrari and Leclerc's first year with, with Ferrari and see what we see. Kimi, 12 podiums, one win, four retirements, an average of sixth, the third place in the standings that we saw up there, and most importantly, he finishes with 251 points in his final season with Ferrari. By comparison, Leclerc's first season with Ferrari, nine podiums, so three off of Kimi, but he does get two wins, so right off the bat, he's, he's one ahead of Kimi there. Two retirements, so not as many as Kimi in that situation. His average finish is 5.6. I don't think that's statistically a big difference between Kimi's sixth place. And he finishes fourth in the standings, one place further back than Kimi did in his final year. So Ferrari takes a step back in the driver standings in that way. Uh, however, it should be noted he does outscore Kimi with 264 points. But if we're looking at this, I think that's a toss-up between these two drivers. And you know, you have a really young driver here who I think is the future of Ferrari. He's finished twice in the podium this year already. I think he looks really good for what he's doing with Ferrari, who, who are really not running well at all. But for me, this is a toss-up. So let's take a look at Alfa Romeo. Kimi. And that's my cat, sorry. My cat is going to interrupt the video. <laughs> Kimi, in 2019, has the zero wins and podiums, nine finishes in the points, two retirements, the average of 11.6, and 12th in the standings, sitting on 43 points from last season with Alfa Romeo. Charles Leclerc's last season with Alfa Romeo in 2018, he gets zero wins and podiums. He does finish in the points 10 times, so one more than Kimi did. Has five retirements, a ton of retirements for, for Leclerc that season. Uh, average finish of 12.4 in standing, or in uh, average finishes per race, and then 13th in the standings, sitting on 39 points. So if we take a look at this one in similar equipment, Kimi outscores him in points, 43 to 39. Average finish is pretty much just one, one spot off, 11.6 to 12.4. And they finish one spot off in the standings with Kimi actually doing a little bit better than, than Charles Leclerc did in his last, last hurrah with Alfa Romeo. So Alfa Romeo makes the change. Kimi goes to Alfa Romeo with Charles Leclerc going to Ferrari. And I'm going to throw this up there and say that I don't think there's much of a difference between these two drivers' performances right now with similar equipment. Comparing teammate to teammate through 2018, 2019, and some of 2020, or comparing last year and first year with the different teams between Charles Leclerc and Kimi Raikkonen, they're pretty much a toss-up between these two drivers. It, I mean, they're really, really close in standings. So my answer to this, he might be 40 years old, and he might be at the tail end of his career, but Kimi Raikkonen has every right to be in a Formula 1 car right now. As much right as Charles Leclerc and obviously Antonio Giovinazzi, and certainly as much as Seb. He's right there with them. Seb's got a little bit more of a, a winning record, but when you look at the actual hard stats here, Kimi has, has not really lost much. And I think in the right equipment, Kimi Raikkonen would be right back where he was with Ferrari two years ago. So, tough situation for him with Alfa Romeo right now. As I've said in my other videos, the... Ferrari-powered cars are, are way underperforming this season. And I was hard on Kimi in my last video, too. I thought he had a really bad race at Silverstone. But when I take a look at the actual hard stats, Kimi Raikkonen has not really lost much. And in my opinion, he has every right to be in an F1 car right now. So, no, he is not too old to be driving. Do I think he has three, four, five seasons left? No, of course not. And could I see Alfa Romeo or other teams making a move to a younger driver? 
um, or snagging someone like Checo if he's available, sure. But I also wouldn't blame them for keeping Kimmy for another year or two. Kimmy hasn't lost a touch, and I'm loving watching this guy race, and the stats back it up. So what do you think? Do you think Kimmy Raikkonen is too old to be driving a Formula 1 car? Are you looking at the stats that I'm looking at? Anyway, if you like what you see, please hit a like and give me a subscribe. I'm going to try and put out a video every single day. So thank you for watching.